Sony ZV-E10, then things that you absolutely have to do. The first one, and this is gonna save you so much time. Use this button, it's called the FN button or the function button when you're in the menus. So if you're digging through the menus trying to find something, you gotta scroll down and left and you gotta be tapping everything. If you press the FN button, you're gonna cycle through all of the different sections of each menu and that's gonna save you a ton of time. If you're using the kit lens version like I am on the Sony ZV-E10, the glass on the actual lens, which is really the important part, is a bit close to the front. So that means it can get smudged easily, it can get scratched, particularly if you forget the little lens cap. So what I suggest you do is buy yourself a UV filter. Now, essentially what this does, it screws on here, and that's gonna protect the lens and the glass that's in there from scratches or being bumped around. And the best thing, your lens cap still fits on. And don't worry, this isn't going to make any difference to your actual video quality. A lot of content makers want to shoot in that filmic 24 frames per second, that 24p, or they want to use 120p slow motion on something like the Sony ZV-E10. Now, depending on where you are in the world, you might not be seeing 24p or you might not be seeing 120p. To change this, it's really easy and it's a huge tip because you're going to get lots more frame rates, including that 24p if you go to Setup 2, NTSC PAL Selector, Follow the instructions and keep in mind you will have to format your SD card. So just before you do, make sure there's nothing on it that you don't want to lose. So the batteries in the Sony ZV-E10, they're, well, you know, they're small, they're tiny. They're better than what comes with the Sony ZV-1. And if you want these to last just a little bit longer, here's two tips that's going to stretch these out just a little bit more, which could mean you getting the shot versus not getting the shot at all. Jump into setup one go to monitor brightness, which is on page one of five, and change that to manual. Now, if it's a really bright day, you might need it on sunny weather, but if you bring it into manual and scroll down, you can bring it down to minus two, which is gonna dim the display, depending on where you're at, this could really help save a little bit of juice in the battery. And then the second tip here as well is what you need to do is jump into airplane mode, which is gonna shut down all the wireless connectivity. So if you're using the camera with your phone, then this isn't a good tip, but if you're not, this is gonna save on the juice as well. So set airplane mode to off, boom, you're gonna save a little bit more juice on the battery and get a little bit more out of it. When it comes to formatting SD cards or enabling USB mode or struggling through all of the extensive menus on the Sony ZV-E10, it can be a pain. But if you're finding yourself that, yeah, the one thing that you're gonna do all the time is formatting cards or maybe enable USB streaming mode, here's what you need to do. Press menu, go to my menu one, select add item, and then scroll through to whatever you want to add into this menu, which enables you to access these a lot quicker. So in this case here, it's on page 26 of 27. I'm gonna select format, I'm gonna add it in there, and that's added in there now. So anytime I want to format an SD card, I just fire up the camera and I go straight to my menu and I can select format or whatever you want to add in there. It's completely up to you. Here's a big tip as well, guys. Don't just think any old audio level is going to do here. Uh, uh, uh. If you're plugging in external mics, the audio level is going to change. Now, if you press the FN button, you should have by default LV and a number. That's the actual audio level. So we can bring it up all the ways. And if you're seeing a lot of red when you're talking into the camera, then yeah, no, it's not a good thing. You got to turn it down. On the other side of the coin though, if you're not seeing the little uh, view meters move at all, then you gotta turn it up a little bit. Try and have it not going into the red at all, green to yellow, and you should be golden. Speaking of audio, get an external mic. The mic that's in the Sony ZV-E10 is very good, it works well, but a cheap mic can make a huge difference to your audio. This is the onboard mic in the Sony ZV-E10, and the levels are set currently at around 15. This is a Siren VMQ-1, which is an off-brand of Ulanzi. This is an external mic, and the levels are also at 15 here. This is the Saramonic XRXM1, and the levels here, as yes, you have guessed it, are also set at 15 on the Sony ZV-E10. As you can hear, an external mic can make a huge difference, and I've left some of my recommendations. Links are in the description. Right, on to the next tip, and this one's a banger. The 16 to 50 mil lens allows you to zoom in just a bit. Now, that's fine, but what if you wanna go that extra little bit further, an extra few millimeters? Well, here's the thing. You can enable something called clear image zoom, which is not going to cause any pixelation, and you're not gonna be able to see the difference in quality. In other words, this is really, really good. So, what you need to do, jump into menu, 
go to page six to nine, which is zoom range. And then you've got three options, optical zoom only, which is only the actual lens, clear image zoom or digital zoom. Forget about digital zoom, it's just the block pixels. Use clear image zoom. And then once you get to the 50 mil here and you keep the actual zoom button going, it's going to zoom in a little bit more, giving you those extra few millimeters, which as we all know, an extra few millimeters is always good, right? <clears throat> If you're shooting an awful lot of 4K video or if you're doing an awful lot of webcam streaming with the USB streaming mode in the Sony ZV-E10, you've probably experienced the camera has shot down randomly and you're like, why is the camera shut down? What's going on? Camera essentially is protecting itself from melting and exploding. It's not going to melt. It's not going to explode. Drama. <sighs> But it will get very, very warm, and there is an option to turn this off, which means that you can shoot for longer and you can stream for longer. This option is a bit hidden, but it is in setup one, power setting option, and then go to auto power off temp. It's going to be on standard, make sure it's on high. Now, keep this in mind, if you're in a super hot climate, it doesn't matter if this is set to high, it is still going to shut down at some point because the camera likes to protect itself. But for the best part, you should be in pretty good shape if you're leaving this on high. If you've got more than one camera, maybe you're using your phone or you're putting a whole load of different things together for a video that you're making, finding your actual footage from the Sony ZV-E10 can be a little bit difficult once you've got it off the SD card because it's got the weird naming convention C001 or whatever. Sometimes you just don't know where it is, especially if you have a couple of Sony cameras. This tip though is going to absolutely change all of that forever. Go to setup four, go to file settings, Make sure file number is set to series, the file name format is set to title, and then go to page two by pushing right and change the actual title name settings to something like ZVE10 underscore or whatever you want. And then once you've got that done, you will never be able to not find your Sony ZVE10 footage again because it's all going to be starting with ZVE10 underscore in my case, or it could be whatever you have put in. If you've got some value out of this video, guys, I would really appreciate it if you would hit subscribe, hit the like button, all those things that, you know, I probably should be asking you to do a lot more often. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, don't stop fighting for yourself. Oh, hang on, I got to loosen this, right? Yeah. By the way, this is the first full video I've shot on the Sony FX3. If you've missed that video, it's up here somewhere.